Lesson 2. Laser History In the last lesson, we learned LASER is actually an acronym and hinted at its origins. But before moving forward, it's important to know some basic history about this awesome technology. The idea of lasers was first suggested by Albert Einstein in 1916 when he explained how atoms can release light in a special way called stimulated emission. However, it took many years and many scientists to turn this idea into a reality. The beam given out is in the infrared, and an oscilloscope can be used to demonstrate the existence of oscillations. The lower trace shows the pumping light, and the upper trace the maser signal. The first step was to make a device that could produce stimulated emission at microwave frequencies, which are much lower frequency than visible light. This device was called a maser, and it was invented by Charles Towns, Arthur Schawlow, and others in the 1950s. They used gases, crystals, or liquids to make their maser work. Here we have another experiment which demonstrates the purity of frequency of the signal given out by the helium-neon maser. The medium has as its active part the gas neon. In fact, you can see the tube glowing pink, just as a neon sign does. This one uses a solid. The medium here is a crystal of calcium tungstate neodymium. Such crystals are made in the way you saw at the start. Hey guys, just want to interrupt this lesson for just a second to remind you that if you want a more immersive course experience while you're going through this course or any of our other ones, remember to check out the Laser Master Academy. Not only is it the number one way to support the channel, but you also get the written component, the audio component, if you'd rather listen to these lessons, and self-paced assessments so that you can make sure that you are retaining the knowledge that you're gaining while you're going through this course. Find out more at masters.lasereverything.net. The word maser stands for microwave amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. This means that the light the maser produces is in the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is lower frequency than visible light. Although you can't see microwaves, these and visible light are both forms of electromagnetic radiation. The next step was to make a device that could produce stimulated emission at visible or infrared frequencies, which are much higher frequency than microwaves. This device was called a laser, and it was invented by Theodore Maiman in 1960. He used a synthetic ruby crystal to make the laser work. Soon after, other scientists made lasers using different materials, such as gases, liquids, and even semiconductors. This is another solid state optical maser. It gives out light that you can see. The apparatus is rather different from the one you just saw. The pumping lamp is here, and its light is reflected off this parabolic mirror and focused on the crystal. The crystal is ruby and is positioned inside a dewar. The light given out by this maser is red. Here is the maser beam as it is directed into our camera. The ruby crystal itself is cut in the shape of a trumpet to make maximum use of the light which is focused on the end of the crystal. The reason for this is that you need a much higher pumping intensity to make ruby oscillate. We'll discuss how these different types of lasers function later in this course. A long time has passed since then and lasers have become more powerful, efficient, and versatile. They can produce different colors and shapes of light and they can be controlled very precisely. They can also be used for many purposes, such as cutting, welding, printing, scanning, communicating, measuring, researching, and entertaining. Lasers are one of the most important inventions of the 20th century, and they continue to shape the world in the 21st century. Now that you have a grip on the basics of laser history, in the next section we'll explore some of the ways lasers are used in the modern world.